image? Uh -huh. Okay. So um, you can see that there's this perinephric or this this renal slash perirenal process. It's kind of T2 intermediate, similar to the kidney. Um, not T2 bright necessarily, although it does have potential areas of central crisis. And um, there's a delay in loading this up. Come on. Hmm, maybe my internet is slow. Okay, there it is. So you can see it's actually pretty densely enhancing. Um, even those central areas of T2 were, are mostly enhancing actually, um, but it was most too intermediate. And it almost looks like it's like encasing and squishing the kidney. So I'll tell you this was not a renal cell carcinoma. Anyone online or any of my students have an idea? Sarcoma? Yes, um, that's a great thought. You can get the renal cell and of the retroperitoneum that encase the kidney. Um, let's see where the IVC is. The IVC is over here. You IVC is emulated like this. It can be like smushing the IVC and like it's kind of difficult sometimes to tell, but this one is really lobulated. Um, we also have about what? Adrenal cortical carcinoma. Um, so my fellow brought up adrenal cortical carcinoma, also a good idea for huge, uh, you know, so we couldn't see the adrenal gland. Oh wait, maybe it's back there. But um, usually that's more like encapsulated mass, like not necessarily growing around the kidney. Um, and then we thought about lymphoma, but we didn't see other sites. Um, the diffusion was extremely restricted. So that was another reason we brought up um, lymphoma. Anyway, this, this patient turned out to have a history of multiple myeloma. Um, plasma cytoma? Yeah, exactly. So the, we, uh, we brought up plasma cytoma and they biopsied it and that's what this was. Is that and, a baby to liver? It kind of so looks like uh, What about the liver? Is it invading the liver? It kind of looks like that boundary. Like I don't see like a nice. Yeah, uh, definitely pushing on the liver here. And anytime like the renal cell carcinoma can often do this too. Um, and I feel like basically I don't have a good way of telling when it's actually invading or not. So I basically describe it. Like if they're gonna resect the renal cell carcinoma, I'll describe like extensive interface with the liver can an invasion. Neurologists basically usually tell me back that like either it was invading or like it popped right off. And so they're like, don't you have some MRI sequence where you can tell? And I'm like, no, I can't. So I think it's better to describe it so that they um, are prepared to potentially do a partial hepatectomy if they have to. Um, so a couple of words about plasma cytoma. Um, so there's solitary bone plasma cytoma, and then there's extra medullary plasma cytoma. Um, the solitary bone one often is like in the pelvis, like in the sacrum. And then the extra medullary is like, it can be anywhere in your body, but the most common uh, place is actually in your head and neck. So if you Google like plasma cytoma MRI, actually most of the cases you'll see will be in the head and neck. But this perinephric space, it was written about in a bunch of papers. So this is a place that looks to a lot of lymphatics and different kinds of like um, lymphocytes that live in that space. And so that's another space that you can get this kind of tumor. So the patient has a history of multiple myeloma, obviously that would help. Um, the other thing about these is that they're very chemosensitive, so they basically like shrink away completely if they, if they get chemo, they can. And, um, but 30% of them will progress to developing multiple myeloma, whereas only a very small percentage of patients with multiple myeloma will develop tremedullary plasma cytoma. So anyway, we're hoping it'll shrink away with chemo. One of the cool, I mean, just, to, just like, you know, in retrospect, um, just it being so homogeneous, so densely enhancing, um, restricting diffusion, like things to think about would be like lymphoma, but if they have a history of multiple myeloma, then plasma cytoma. Any questions?